Hey, what's Mayo? I'm wearing my kitty poncho today. My kitty poncho. My kitty poncho. <laughs> Let's take off the hood and get a little bit more professional, shall we? Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Back in this video, how I healed my insomnia, I shared that I meditate myself to sleep. And since then, <laughs> I've had many people request that I share how I meditate myself to sleep. So that's what today's video is about. You can also check this out in blog form over on heyowitzmayo.blogspot.com. So since about my mid-teens, I have been meditating myself to sleep and it's the only way that I sleep. I basically just over time trained myself to fall asleep and intentionally so. I really needed a long-term solution for my insomnia problems and this worked for me. I've been doing this for a lot of years, about seven or eight years I think, and with time, with daily practice, I've gotten really skilled at it and I can do it very quickly. I can get my body to fall asleep in about five to ten minutes and I can get my mind to fall asleep in about 15 minutes but only through meditation. I, I can't make myself fall asleep that quickly any other way. And without meditating um, to help myself sleep, I usually, it takes me like an hour to fall asleep. That was the old problems of my life. This isn't something I was taught how to do and it's not even something that I researched how to do. I just kind of stumbled into this and figured out that I could make myself fall asleep just with meditation. Initially, I learned I could meditate my body to sleep and later with time and with practice, I was able to meditate my mind to sleep as well. And uh, yeah, so I will tell you more about all of this. I use this technique not only to help myself fall asleep, but I use it for other things as well. I use it to help my body rest if my mind can't sleep. I use it to fully fall asleep. I use it to meditate deeply, to enter into lucid dreaming, to enter into astral projection, astral travel, spiritual encounters, etc. I use it to lessen stress, tension, anxiety, depression, to avoid having panic attacks or to calm back down afterwards. I use it to ease headaches or migraines, to ease physical pain, chronic pain, because painkillers didn't help my physical pain, but this technique did. I use it to cope through bad period cramps, um, essentially like a Lamaze type technique to meditate my way through pain, <laughs> and lots more. When in doubt in my life, I lay down, I meditate, I focus on my breathing, and I focus on relaxing my body. So the technique is actually fairly simple in my opinion. Um, I think initially I got the idea for this because I had heard that if you lay still enough for long enough, your body thinks you're asleep and your body will fall asleep, but your mind won't. And I was intrigued by this thought. I have no idea where I saw it. Maybe Twitter, maybe Tumblr, who knows? But I saw this idea and I was intrigued and curious to try it. So I did and it worked. Initially into this, you will feel twitchy and maybe even itchy. And that's just normal because normally people do feel those things as they're falling asleep. So what you have to do is ignore those sensations and focus on staying relaxed and not moving. Because if you move, you're gonna wake yourself back up. But you have to just kind of ignore it and then you'll fall into this uh, sleep state. So step one is to get comfortable. This is important to be as comfortable as you can because you really need to fully, fully relax your body. I suggest laying down fully flat, no pillows if possible. Um, of course, if you're uncomfortable and you need pillows, that's fine. Just, you know, point being is get comfortable. You could do this um, laying on your sides, but I think laying flat on your back is the best way to learn how this feels because you're feeling all of the sensations like equally on your whole body versus if you're laying on your side, you're gonna feel it just on like, I don't know, it just feels different. So I suggest starting with laying on your back and then with time you may get to where you can do it on your side as well or you kind of fall asleep on your back and then you just roll onto your side and you stay that way. 
Although I do use this every night to fall asleep, I also just do this as a meditation type practice. So a lot of times I'm just doing this on the floor on a squishy yoga mat. Uh, a thin yoga mat may not be cushiony enough, may not be comfortable enough for this practice because you are gonna have to lay totally still, totally comfortably for many, many minutes. So like a thin yoga mat or not laying on anything at all, maybe hard on your tailbone or like the backs of your hip bones or like the backs of your shoulders because those things are gonna be weighing heavily on the hard floor. So a really squishy yoga mat will be great. I got this one from Ross. It was super inexpensive and it's really, really comfy. Obviously you can do this on your bed as well or on a couch or somewhere comfortable where you can just lay flat. <laughs> the next step is to fully relax. My favorite approach to relaxation is to focus on my body zone by zone and just go through my entire body, head to toe or toe to head, um, relaxing every part of me. I go through my whole body until my entire body is relaxed and basically limp and heavy, just lay in there. For example, I'll focus on relaxing my feet, then my legs, then my torso, then my upper back and shoulders. I usually either go from bottom to top or from top to bottom. Uh, I just find that that flow works really easily because you're not bouncing around to like different parts of the body. You don't have to think about it. You're just going up from your feet to your head or down from your head to your feet. It's just very simple. It takes a lot of the thought out of it in my opinion. Step number three is to breathe like you are sleeping. <laughs> uh, breathing like sleep just naturally tricks your body into thinking that you are sleeping or that it's sleep time. You breathe differently when you're asleep and you breathe differently when you're fully awake. I think great advice I could give is to pay attention to how you breathe during different times. So you can notice how you breathe when you're sleeping um, just by checking in really like right before you fall asleep or as you're getting sleepy, notice how your breathing feels or right in the morning when you wake up, assuming you didn't wake up from like an alarm or from something startling you, if you just naturally woke up, pay attention to how your breathing feels. And then you can go and mimic that during meditation and breathing that same way will instantly trigger your body into thinking, oh, it's sleepy time. Let's go to sleep now. Initially, you're just going to intentionally start by breathing slower and deeper because that is how relaxed breathing is. And then you're just going to kind of relax into that and let yourself breathe naturally in a way that's comfortable and calm for you. I find for myself, if I focus too much on breathing and trying to control my breathing too much, it actually triggers me to have anxiety. I feel like I'm suffocating, I get anxiety, and then I spin into a panic attack. So. For me, I actually can't focus 100% completely on my breathing or trying to control my breathing too much. I have to set the intention of, okay, slower breaths, deeper breaths, and then I have to think about just the feeling of relaxing my body rather than only focusing on my breath. That's something that I find works for me. That may be helpful advice for someone else. Maybe for you though, you can focus only on your breathing and that works well for you. So. I don't know, play around with it. Really though, that's it. That's my advice is don't overthink it. Just uh, lay flat, be comfortable, focus on relaxation and don't move until your body falls asleep because scientifically it should, <laughs> or at least that's the theory that I heard. If you're wanting to have only your body fall asleep and you want your mind to stay awake, then keep your mind awake. <laughs> Um, you can daydream a little bit, you can visualize things, but daydreaming may lead to falling asleep. So if you're wanting to stay awake, then keep your mind just lucid, keep it awake. Don't let your mind start like drifting all over the place. Just focus on the physical sensations of relaxing. You can even keep your eyes fully awake during this just as long as you're not moving your body. You can move your eyes around though. If you're wanting to use this for sleep and to fully have all of you fall asleep, then 100% just let your mind check out and let your mind drift and go wherever it wants to and daydream because daydreaming usually leads to dreaming. So if you pay attention to yourself right before you fall asleep, your breathing will change rates, your body will feel heavier and more relaxed, and then your mind starts to kind of wander off and that wandering turns into dreaming and then you're out. So if you're wanting to fully fall asleep, then mimic those patterns. The relaxation, the feeling heavy, the letting your mind daydream and wander and feel all floaty and wonderful, and then you're out. <laughs>
In this video, I wanted to make a note about sleep paralysis because in my opinion, this technique does feel a lot like sleep paralysis. So if you are someone who is really triggered by anything slightly resembling sleep paralysis, then I do not recommend this for you because you may panic. <laughs> Um, it's not sleep paralysis though. So for comparison, sleep paralysis is a feeling of being conscious but unable to move. It occurs when a person passes between stages of wakefulness and sleep. During these transitions, you may be unable to move or speak for a few seconds or up to a few minutes. Sleep paralysis is different because most people report that they can't move or you're unable to move or speak, but in this meditative type technique, you're able to move whenever you want to. When you're not moving, it feels almost like you can't move, but you can. You can move, you can speak if you choose to. You're in control the whole time. I've had sleep paralysis before and it is different than this, although the feelings <laughs> is very similar. It's super, super parallel. Your body almost feels identical, except sleep paralysis, you, you can't move or you can't speak. And this, you can if you want to. <laughs> so just making a note of that. So if you experience it, just don't freak out. But if you are someone who is really triggered by anything resembling sleep paralysis, like I said, probably don't do this. <laughs> Personally, I think sleep paralysis and feelings that resemble that are fascinating. I think it's super interesting and really cool. I dig it, but other people are terrified of it, so. Lastly, I want to suggest that you get up slowly afterwards. So assuming you're not doing this to actually fall asleep, but you're doing this more as like a relaxing um, technique, make sure to just get up slowly afterwards. Because if you're using this to calm yourself and to be relaxed, then you wanna get up in a very calm and relaxed way. You don't wanna just like jolt yourself out of it because that's gonna spark adrenaline and it's gonna undo pretty much everything you just did for yourself. So move slowly, rise slowly, do some calming things afterwards. I find this is a really great technique to do later in the evening just because it like gets my body like really chilled out for the evening and ready kind of for my bedtime routine. Or if you're having a lot of stress and you just need some stress relief time, then this is a great technique because all of that will just melt out of you. Uh, personally, I never move myself out of this state super quickly because if I've been laying there for 30 minutes or an hour, when you first move, it feels like you're coming out of a really deep sleep. You feel super heavy and you may feel a little bit groggy. <laughs> Definitely physically, you'll feel groggy. Mentally, I'm not sure you'll feel groggy but feels very heavy, very sluggish, and so you wanna move slowly. I usually start by moving my fingertips and my toes, and then I just move my weight inwards. So I start with my fingers, and then I move my wrists, and then I move my elbows, and then I move my shoulders. So for my feet, I move my toes, and then my ankles, and then I flex my calves, and then I move my knees a little bit. Then somewhere in there, I start turning my head, moving my head around, waking my face up, moving my shoulders so that my back starts to wake up, and then I move into moving my core last. But if you're instantly like gonna try and sit up out of it, oh my God, it's gonna be so heavy and so hard. So start outwards, wake yourself up slowly to the inside, and then you'll maintain that really relaxed, calm feeling. I just, again, wanna clearly express that this is not like sleep paralysis where you're out of control and you're not sure what's happening. I'm in control the whole time. I'm aware and lucid of my situation the whole time. I'm calm and relaxed the whole time. Anytime I do this, I come out of it feeling really calm, really relaxed and like recharged. So if you guys do try this, I guess comment below and say how it feels. <laughs> um, I'm curious how this will feel for other people. I've never like shared this to see how other people respond to it. So let me know. From this point in the video, I am going to insert a recorded version of me meditating myself to sleep. I will speed it up for this video so you can just see that I'm just laying there and twitching. <laughs> um, I will put that video separately in a full length, non sped up version if you're just curious to watch me do it. So yeah, there you go.
classic male. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Comment below if you enjoy this or tried it out yourself. Be sure to support me on Patreon if you enjoy what I do.